All right, we are starting off with some pockets of dense fog across the area. Not everybody getting it. Fog isn't always uniform, but some of us are. Uh, temperatures right now mid to upper 60s. It's humid out there. We will gradually see the fog lift, gradually see some breaks of sunshine develop, and by the end of the day, we should be at least partly cloudy. A muggy high temperature in the low 80s. Kim? All right, Paul. Well, here's an area that is getting that fog this morning. We're looking at I-96 right at Novi Road. Visibility not good here. Definitely want to slow down this morning. If you do travel this way, give yourself some extra time, but we are accident free to start off this morning. All right, Kim, thank you. There was a disturbance in the force after a California donut shop is robbed by a man in a Star Wars mask. So surveillance video shows the man with a semi-automatic handgun mm -hmm. wearing a stormtrooper mask. He told the clerk to empty the register. Thankfully, no one was hurt in all of this, but clearly it looks like this guy chose the dark side. Clearly, how scary is that? Just yeah. to be there working and someone like that walks in with a gun. Unreal. Nobody was hurt. Time now is 525 and new in our next half hour stories across Metro Detroit, including Livonia and Royal Oak. And Nick Monticelli working on breaking news from Detroit this morning. Nick. Everyone, good morning to you. A motorcycle club here on Detroit's west side has exploded. We'll give you a live update on what firefighters think happened and who was inside at the time. That's next on Local 4 News today. Let's get you. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Hey, we do begin this half hour with breaking news from Detroit's west side where a popular club is reduced to just rubble. And the story comes from Detroit's west side this morning. We have learned that that building used to be a hot spot for a motorcycle club. Let's turn things over to Local 4's Nick Monticelli. He is there at the scene. Nick, do we know if anybody was hurt? Uh, no, in fact, nobody was inside at the time, which is the best news in all of this, because if you look behind me, you see what's left of this motorcycle club. If anybody were inside, they would not have survived this. This is the Street Royalty Motorcycle Club here at the corner of Dexter and Webb on the west side of Detroit. We also have some video that we can show you, and you can see from this that this building is no longer existing. Just a couple of walls that are standing up, mainly just uh, concrete cinder blocks, but the majority of it has just been tossed outside of it. Now, according to the Detroit Fire Department, they believe this was a natural gas explosion. They haven't had anybody out here to give an official cause of what happened yet, but they did call the utility companies to try to narrow down exactly what happened out here. But again, nobody was inside at the time, which is the best news in all of this. There is normally a fence surrounding this motorcycle club that is, of course, gated and now locked up. Nobody can get inside of this right now, though. Again, this is the Street Royalty Motorcycle Club here on Detroit's west side. You look at their Facebook page, you can see they are a very active motorcycle club doing a lot of rides along the East Coast and helping out with fundraisers and things like that. So this was a very active club, and I imagine they will either rebuild or find someplace else to hold their, uh, their meetings and get-togethers at this point. But again, they believe this was a natural gas explosion, but the Detroit Fire Department still has to make that official determination. We are live here on Detroit's West Side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All right, thanks very much, Nick. And one thing we didn't see much of in your live shot was fog. We'll talk about visibilities in a second. Uh, temperatures right now solidly in the mid 60s. And when you have clouds and fog around, that's uh, kind of like a blanket and just keep things rather uniform. So we are top to bottom, basically 64 to 67 degrees across the area. All right, here's fog. Again, fog is not uniform. You go through pockets of denser fog and pockets of uh, uh, less dense fog. So we're down to a quarter mile in Port Huron. Same thing at Metro, Monroe, uh, City Airport in Detroit at a quarter mile. We're at a mile and three quarters in Pontiac. Ann Arbor, you're down to about three quarters of a mile. Flint down to a half a mile. So there you see it's going to vary as you head across the area. And so just be aware you could run into some of that thick fog. Uh, make sure you use the low beams. The, don't use the brights, the high beams, because that just reflects the light right back at you and you can't see as well. So the fog will gradually lift. We gradually get a few breaks and then we become partly cloudy by late in the day with a high temperature muggy of 81 degrees. The radar images coming out of the San Juan radar are just ridiculous. I'll have the very latest for you on Hurricane Maria coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, let's send over to Kim and see what's happening on your roads. All right. Thank you, Paul. Well, this morning we're starting off the morning commute on a fantastic note. You can see here we've got a lot of green on our maps. No accidents to report at this time. So we're talking about 
talking about some construction over on the east and westbound lanes of M59. Between Williams Lake and Airport Road, only one lane open there between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. This will be a project happening today and tomorrow during that same time. And then east and westbound M59 between Opdyke and Crooks, um, only one lane is going to be open there for a nightly project. This is 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. This will continue until Friday, wrapping up at 5 a.m. We also want to let you know about more construction over on I-94. I'll tell you all about that coming up in my next report at 544. Back to you. All right, Kim, we'll see you then. It is 532. And now an update on Mexico's deadly earthquake. Rescuers are still digging through the destruction and all the debris with hopes to rescue anyone who might be trapped after buildings collapsed. Late Tuesday, Mexico's federal government declared a state of disaster. The 7.1 magnitude quake has killed at least 240 people, and sadly that number is expected to climb. A Livonia man who owns and operates a modeling agency is now accused of luring young girls for child pornography after uncovering a sex trafficking operation in Flint. Federal agents raided the home of this guy, 28 year old Ryan Ullman, and found child pornography images inside of his home. It was determined that he had images from the same girls as part of his business, same girls in the operation out of Flint. Authorities say that Ullman was using the agency to entice young girls to send him photos of themselves. One woman says that he contacted her, but she refused to work with him. Kept persisting that that is the way his agency worked, that his agency was a lot different from any other agency. Allman appeared before a federal judge on Tuesday and is being detained until his detention hearing on Friday. Federal authorities now have arrested a Chicago man who's been on the run for 14 years, 68 year old Eddie Hicks who allegedly posed as a federal law enforcement task force officer to steal from local drug dealers and then resell their drugs, was arrested Tuesday morning in Detroit. Hicks, who was a police officer for 30 years, had been on the FBI's radar since 2003. His next court appearance will be held in Chicago. And the local doctor charged with performing genital mutilation on girls will be released from federal custody while she awaits trial. A group of supporters for Dr. Uh, Jumana Nagarwala pledged to pay $4 million if she flees the country. She has been in custody since her arrest in April and will remain in custody until the bond is finalized. When she is released, she'll have to wear a tether. Nagarwala denies committing any crime, saying that it was a religious custom. Royal Oak Police have identified the person responsible for spray painting racist graffiti on multiple homes, but there will not be any charges. What investigators are saying is that the suspect suffers from what seems to be serious mental health issues. The person is expected to be evaluated by professionals and police will work with them to get him the help they need. And an argument over empty beer cans that led to gunfire at the Heather Highlands golf course in Holly has ended with an arrest. 45 year old Robert Fleece is charged with felonious assault and reckless discharge of a firearm. The couple he confronted did suffer minor injuries during a scuffle. He is being held at the Oakland County Jail. It is 535 now and it has two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and the owner is asking for close to a million dollars for this. And the crazy thing is you just might get it because of its location. Okay, location, 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 plus denim on denim. Just ahead, the new fashion trend of wearing double jeans. Okay. We'll try and explain that one to you. Also, another hurricane, a massive one. We've been talking about Hurricane Maria. But don't forget about Jose. It's still out there as well, already pounding parts of the East Coast. We'll be right back. If you're looking for. Welcome back, everybody. 539 is your time and turning our attention to good health, helping kids to bounce back. We're talking about the ability to adapt to challenges and having resilience. The experts say that it can be learned and we as parents play a large part in developing the skills that kids need to be stronger. Local force Karen Drew has more. By the time these preschoolers turn 18, nearly half will have experienced serious trauma, like divorce, poverty, violence, or abuse. Trauma may have no external signs, so for teachers and counselors, it often means reading between the lines of bad behavior. Things that look disruptive when kids are consistently aggressive or when they have a lot of fear. Kristen Anderson Moore is an internationally recognized social psychologist. 
She says chronic stress in the first few years of life slows down development. Of course, the brain is developing in early childhood, so trauma and challenges are particularly important for young children. But we have found that children um, can bounce back. Research indicates a strong relationship with a parent or caregiver is key to building resilience. In one study, when confronted with a strange event, toddlers had less stress hormone activation if they had a secure relationship with at least one adult. If they can show support, if they can provide a safe environment and then help their child acquire the skills that the child needs. Those skills include the ability to plan ahead, regulate behavior, and adapt to change. Moore suggests parents listen carefully to a child's concerns, then show them how to react. For example, if a child does poorly um, in school, the parent might go in and talk to the teacher and learn what is wrong. If it turns out to be reading, the parent might take the child to the library and take out books and work on reading. Small steps with a big impact, helping prepare kids for success. Karen Drew, Local 4 News. Well, a tornado has reportedly touched down in northwest Oregon, causing some severe damage to a dairy farm in Lynn County. According to officials, no one was hurt, but four barns at Spencer Dairy Farm were badly damaged. Firefighters in Lacombe say that the tornado left a three quarter mile path of debris, including down power lines. Two barns were completely destroyed and others have extensive roof damage. A survey team from the National Weather Service will verify if indeed this was a tornado as they assess the damage there in Oregon. And now to the Jersey Shore. They are feeling the wrath of Hurricane Jose. While the eye of the hurricane may be hundreds of miles out in the Atlantic, rain and wind are still making their way to the beaches on the East Coast. Wave heights are expected to reach between 10 and 15 feet. Dangerous to be standing right there against the water. Strongest winds over Long Island gusted up to about 50 miles per hour. New York City may even feel some of the effects of Jose this morning with wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour, and which Paul feels pretty intense, but that is nothing compared to what Puerto Rico is feeling as we speak. Absolutely, and I've got uh, bad news again. Now, San Juan uh, about uh, 15 minutes ago reported a wind gust to 91 miles per hour, just issued a new weather observation, but there's no wind on that observation, so it's possible that the wind sensor, the anemometer, has now failed in San Juan as this eye wall continues marching across the island. Conditions in San Juan getting worse and worse and worse. Uh, we had uh, strong wind gusts earlier of uh, uh, 85, 86 miles per hour here at Fajardo, and uh, it, this, is, this is the eye right here, and the, the strongest winds are in this eye wall right around it right here. So it, again, it's progressing to the northwest, and I'll just put it in motion and show you. It's just going to look, look at this. This is a direct hit going right across the island of Puerto Rico. And so this is a, you can't draw it up as more of a worst case scenario in terms of this. Again, remember, Puerto Rico is one of the most densely populated parts of the United States. So this is really, really serious. This, this could be a humanitarian catastrophe over there. Wave heights out in the ocean are still running between 20 and 30 feet. So keep in mind that the, the wind from the storm that's driving towards shore, you have those waves and you have uh, above the normal tide levels, you have water that's probably, it's not 28 foot waves hitting the shore, but you'll have probably 10 to 15 foot seas above the normal tide level crashing ashore so there I mean there's a lot of dynamics going on with this storm and not to mention there's a lot of higher terrain in Puerto Rico as well so the wind is even stronger up at those elevations now as this goes across the island it's going to continue northward and now this is where tropical storm Jose actually has some impact in fact let's show you Jose here it is right here it's just spinning its wheels out here the wind near the center is 65 miles per hour and what we have out in the Atlantic we have this big area of high pressure called the Bermuda High which is extended northward that's preventing anything from moving northward but this creates a weakness in that high and that may keep Maria out to shore and wind gusts Rhonda was just talking about it you can see uh, here Providence Rhode Island already gusting to around 30 miles per hour with the storm. All right, 
we are quiet right now except for some fog mid 60s and very very muggy out there as we start our day and you can even see to the west though we're starting to see some breakage here so once the fog lifts we still have a lot of clouds perhaps some breaks of sun but those breaks will start to gradually develop during the day and then we will see partly cloudy skies by the end of the day so here we are we have a warm front to the south that will be pushing northward during the day uh, the model is trying to spit out a possible isolated shower in the thumb today I don't think that's going to happen but uh, there's a small chance if you live up in the thumb but uh, for the rest of us I don't think we see any chance of rain today and then tomorrow uh, there's a little disturbance this front will not make it here because of Jose out here so essentially this uh, this front's going to stop and there's a little disturbance that could again slight chance especially to the north to trigger a shower so breaks developing today once the fog lifts 81 for the high and now here's what a lot of people are looking for and that is um, an extension of summer Kim and believe me summer is here with plenty of sunshine all the way through the weekend into early next week all right, lots of good football happening this weekend, too. Great forecast. Well, we do want to let you know about a problem on the road as you head out the door this morning. Those of you traveling over on eastbound M14, the ramp to southbound I-275, there is an accident there blocking the shoulder, so you may see a little bit of a delay. Use caution while traveling through that area, but that's the only accident we're dealing with this morning, so we want to let you know about some construction as well to watch out for a little bit later this morning. Over on westbound I-94, between 11 mile and 8 mile, one lane block there, starting at 10 a.m., wrapping up at 3 p.m. so hopefully it won't affect your morning or evening commute. We also want to let you know about construction for those of you traveling through the Novi area east and westbound I-96 between Novi Road and I-275. Only one lane open there. This is an overnight project starting at 9 o'clock this evening wrapping up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. and this will continue nightly through Friday so keep that one in mind as well. And we also want to take a look at your commute over on the lodge. We'll show you that with one of our MDOT cameras coming up at 554. Back to you. All right, thank you, Kim. It is 547 now. Let's get to some stories that you might have missed. We've heard of, of denim on denim outfits. Yes, We've denim heard of that. top, denim bottom. Yeah, that might be a little mismatched, but this something completely different. Take a look at this. It's what designers... <laughs> <laughs> now, Why? come on now. It's what designers are calling double jeans. I call it double mom jeans, but that's a whole different story. The new trend comes from a London fashion house. Mm. It's denim on denim with layered hideous waistbands. <laughs> we're not sure why designers came up with this idea, but we're told that they're sold out, believe it or not. And that's despite the $695 price tag. I don't know what's worse. The fact that it looks like a mom jean, the fact that there's two waistbands, <laughs> the fact that there are two different color denim on there with a very light colored <laughs> denim stripe down the side or the horrible waist photoshopping that they did on that models. There are many, form. many troubling things about that. Yes, that fashion style. And then the $695 <laughs> price tag. It's the most ridiculous of them all. To each his own, right? Yes. Uh, one Florida woman got creative when it came to an attempt to get her power back on when Hurricane Irma swept through more than a week ago. Well, 37 year old Kenise Lee, she was <laughs> in a Tampa hospital. <laughs> from a double organ transplant when Irma hit her Fort Myers neighborhood. And now she's gone viral. She put up this sign in her front yard that read, hot single female seeks sexy lineman to electrify her life and posted this picture of herself standing by it on Facebook. Let me just tell you, she gets an A <laughs> for everything. Creativity, the sign, the shorts. Oh. She put the sign up after hearing that it could take up to two weeks for her power to be restored and says that she only did it because there were certain things that she needed during her recovery from uh, her medical procedures that she'd recently had. And guess what? It worked. Within a day, she got more than 1,000 shares, and it also caught the attention of some local linemen who stopped by on Monday to restore her power. That ain't all they restored. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it professional. Uh, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> We're here to uh, get your power hooked back up. Right. <laughs> We're going to need your phone number. Exactly. Uh, first. And why are you coming over to restore my power at midnight? <laughs> Mm. After hours. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing open after midnight. You know that phrase. It is 549, everybody. Location is everything in real estate. We know that. And in Green Bay, Wisconsin, one listing proves just that. I can't believe this house is still here. Many Packers fans would love the chance to have Lambeau Field right in their own backyard. And one homeowner has that view. Their neighbor 
Well, there it is, and that neighbor's trying to cash in. The owners of this house, right where Lambo sits right behind, listed this two-bedroom, two-bathroom home for sale for nearly a million dollars. And mind you, this is in Green Bay, Wisconsin, a home that size in Los Angeles. Yeah. I get it. Um, it's far more than the assessed market value of $371,000. Could you imagine a home right in front of Ford Field and then well, going for a million dollars? There are some homes, you know, right across the freeway. Some of the, you know, the condos and apartments. And, and for a million dollars. Yeah. So, some people, some Lions fans, I know one in particular, would hey. pay a million dollars to be able to just tailgate in their to backyard. To be right there. And you know what? If we start winning some Super Bowls like Green Bay has... You went there, didn't you? Spend even more You're for You're talking it. to Matt Stafford, aren't you? We're on our way. <laughs> We're 2-0. Oh, undefeated. Yeah, that's true. That <laughs> is true. Uh, we do want to remind you, everybody, there's only a few days left to enter this year's Film Challenge Detroit and win a trip to the Sundance Film Festival in Utah, plus a 1000 bucks cash. Yeah, you have just till the end of the week, though, to get creative and get that film in or finish up all the editing. Head over to FilmChallengeDetroit.com and submit it. 5 to 15 minutes in length, and it has to fit the theme, good versus evil. And we've received some pretty awesome submissions. Yeah, we have. Let's take a look at one of them. I think you knew where the mayor was. Ah, uh, right. Did you hear from the townspeople? No, a little dude who died came along last night and said, hey there, Mr. Kermit, I'm going to borrow this here mayor for a little while and recently some demons from the underworld. I'll bring him back when I'm done, though. Have a good night, Mr. Kermit. Uh, hold on. Did you say use him to open the gates to the underworld? I was trying to figure out what was on the dude's head on the far left. There was a, there was a lot I was trying to figure out about that submission. <laughs> All the submissions are so different, and every time yeah. I see him, I try to figure out, well, where are they? Yeah. You know, this giant cornfield. Different is a way to describe it. That was uh, Legend of the Townsville, submitted by Dan Alger. So good luck to Dan yeah. and his crew of very talented actors in that film. There you go. We're going to be picking a winner very soon, so stick around. Well, not us specifically. It's... We don't get to pick. No. Good luck, right, we have though, a team everybody. Of people <laughs> yeah, so we're not one of them. 551 <laughs> is your time. And after the break, help wanted. Some 20 local businesses are ready to hire. The job could be yours. We'll tell you where coming up. You better. See what's happening on the next Live in the D. Have fun on a cruise without leaving the D. Plus, how you could improve your health with a spritz today at 10 on Local 4. Film Challenge. All right, we have some pockets of dense fog across the area right now, but we will gradually see that lift this morning and then gradually start to see some breaks in the overcast developing. If you're heading to the Tiger game, it'll be dry, warm, and muggy. Look at that. By the end of the game, in the low 80s, and the wind will be light. Kim? All right, thank you, Paul. Well, right now we are looking at the lodge right at seven mile. You can see we're dealing with a little bit of fog in this area, and that's what Paul's been telling us all morning. Some patchy fog as you head out the door this morning, so you may want to give yourself a little bit of extra time. Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit is hosting a job fair today from noon until 630 this evening. Over 20 employers are going to be on site from a variety of industries seeking full positions, seeking to fill them for entry to mid-level professionals as well as co-op opportunities. Now, this event is free and open to the public. Second Ebenezer Church, the place to go right there off of I-75 near to Quinder Road and McNichols. Also, it is must-see TV this afternoon. Megyn Kelly appears on The Ellen Show once again talking about President Donald Trump. Yes, and Ellen brings up the tweets the president made during his campaign and asks her what she thought about what happened after his election. Here's a preview. Did you really believe that he was going to be a different guy than the guy that was tweeting? No, no. Oh, I thought you, you, you <laughs> did. So my... My reaction was, you know, when he started tweeting and people were sort of horrified and shocked, weren't you paying attention? Like, it, for me, it was like, yes, of course, we knew he was going to behave this way. Of course, Ellen airs right here on Local 4. You can watch that episode this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yeah, we'll definitely tune in for that. It is 557, everybody, and coming up all new at 6, right here on Local 4 News today. Stories from Royal Oak, Wayne, and Detroit. Plus, the earlier they start playing, the more damage that's likely to be done. The shocking findings about youth football players coming up. Plus, Nick Monticelli following breaking news for us this morning. Nick? I've run an explosion at a motorcycle club on Detroit's west side. I just talked to the Detroit Fire Department. What they think caused all of this. That's next on Local 4 News today. The boats are in. 
Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. A building destroyed after some kind of blast, and now investigators are working to find out what led to this explosion in Detroit. We're live with this breaking news coming up. Plus, moments away from landfall, Hurricane Maria already wreaking havoc in Puerto Rico. Could be the strongest storm to ever hit the U.S. territory. Plus, devastation in Mexico City after a massive earthquake crumbles buildings and kills more than 200 people. Rescue efforts are continuing this morning. Thank you so much for joining us on this Wednesday morning. We do want to get right to the breaking news that we're following here at home on Detroit's west side where a motorcycle club hangout was completely leveled by an explosion. The big question in this morning is what caused this blast that really reduces building to rubble? Local force Nick Monticelli, they're live at the scene. Nick, uh, do we know if anyone was hurt? I've read nobody was hurt. Nobody was inside at the time that this motorcycle club exploded. I'll get out of the way. You can see what we're talking about here. We do know right now that this is very likely a natural gas explosion. I know it's very difficult to tell what you're looking at right here, but this was kind of the front section of the motorcycle club, a portion of their address. You can still see there on those cinder blocks. This is one portion of the roof that collapsed down. And if we look over here to the left side, this is what used to be kind of the, the front side of the building that blew out when this explosion happened. And if you look carefully, you can kind of see some cutouts of where the doors and windows used to be. Again, this was on top and then came down like this. We also have some video that we can show you. This happened around midnight last night again at the Street Royalty Motorcycle Club, which is at the corner of Dexter and Webb here on Detroit's west side, not far from that Webb exit off of uh, the Southfield Freeway, or the, lodge, the lodge, I should say. So uh, when firefighters arrived here again around midnight, they could smell natural gas and they knew there was a natural gas leak. They immediately called DTE and they got them out here to shut that off. And that is what they believe caused this explosion. Something caused that leak filling this uh, club with natural gas. And then there was some kind of uh, spark inside, whether it be the water heater or furnace or something, whatever was going on. Uh, that is what made this uh, thing explode. Now, there's no exact determination on if that was for sure the cause of this. They start, we're still waiting for investigators to come out here a little bit later on today to make that official cause. But they still, um, but because of those firefighters arriving here on the scene, smelling that gas, calling DTE out here to shut the gas off, it's pretty safe to say this was a gas explosion. And again, the most important part ever on run is that nobody was inside. Uh, because this easily could have killed somebody if they were. We're live here in Detroit's West Side, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. Yeah, we are glad that no one was inside uh, building reduced to rubble. Pretty remarkable and scary. All right, Nick, thank you. It is 602 now, and we do want to switch gears a little bit and talk about the forecast. Uh, turning things over to meteorologist Paul Gross, tracking the other big story that uh, has a lot of people on edge, as well as a nice stretch of weather here, Paul. Absolutely. It's uh, boy. It's like an August morning here. Mild with temperatures in the mid 60s across the area. Metro is at 66 degrees and that's pretty much 65 66 is pretty much common across the area. The air is calm. There are pockets of dense fog across the area. Some spots, for example, City Airport in Detroit, Metro Airport are down to a quarter mile. Look at Monroe has just dropped to zero visibility with the fog and same thing in the Blue Water area there at Port Huron and other places like Mount Clemens, Pontiac, you're at a half a mile. So there is some very thick fog use that as a barometer in terms of uh, how much earlier you'll leave for work this morning. Well, the fog grad gradually burns off this morning and we get some breaks of sunshine, low 80s for the high. All right, that's our local weather. We're going to start tracking now uh, Hurricane Maria and let's talk about this storm. This is a worst case scenario. If you drew up in a textbook and taught students, this is a worst case scenario. You have live pictures here from Puerto Rico. There's an NBC reporter looks like uh, reporting in the conditions there. Is that San Juan? Oh, the weather chat. It's a weather chat. That might be Paul Goodlow there. I'm trying to see uh, reporting. I think he's in San Juan and conditions have just been going downhill steadily over the past few hours because the eye wall has now been basically progressing across the island. And so uh, you can see here on the graphic there you see 
the eye has now made landfall in southeast Puerto Rico. Uh, the town of Fajardo here, uh, a coastal city, they've had already a 100 mile per hour wind gust. I've not seen a, an additional report from them. San Juan had a 91 mile per hour wind gust last half hour, and then the next report did not have wind. So I think the anemometer may have failed at the weather station there as these stronger winds are now progressing right, just cutting diagonally right across the island. I'll have much more on Maria, uh, Tropical Storm Jose, and our weekend forecast all just ahead, guys. All righty, Paul, we know you'll keep on top of it. Meanwhile, President Trump tweeted his support for Puerto Rico late last night. Yes, and in that tweet, he said Puerto Rico being hit hard by new monster hurricane. Be careful, and our hearts are with you. We will be there to help. Oh, I vacationed there like a year ago. It's such a beautiful island. It's so heartbreaking to see these storms pounding yeah, place after place in the Caribbean, Florida, Houston. Yeah, just... Get rid of hurricane season. Absolutely. All right, time now is 6.04. Uh, the other big story that we're following for you, well, not really a big story. <laughs> but we want, we were hoping it's not too big. Yeah. It's like a nice smooth commute on this Wednesday morning. That's right, but the big issue this morning is the fog. So we yeah. are dealing with that. It's patchy fog, so you may not see it on your morning drive, but you may see it. So just be careful of that. We do have a couple of accidents I want to let you know about this morning. Over in Holly, we have this accident over on the southbound lanes of I-75 here, right at Grange Hall Road. There's an accident there blocking the left shoulder, but as you can see on our maps here, we still do have green there. So we're not seeing much of a delay, just something to be cautious of, especially in those foggy conditions. And we have another accident to let you know about over on the eastbound side of M14, the ramp to southbound I-275. There's an accident there blocking the shoulder, so use caution while approaching that area as well. And we also want to let you know about some construction over on US-23. I'll tell you all about that coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. All right, we'll see you then. In the meantime, it is 6.05 and the death toll is now at 217 after a 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit central Mexico on Tuesday. Rescuers are digging through rubble, trying to rescue people that may be trapped under fallen buildings. A state of disaster has been declared by the Mexican federal government, and the images and video coming out of Mexico is just devastating. <laughs> You are looking at video from a live newscast during the hurricane in Mexico City showing just how frightening the situation was. That news anchor there was giving his report when that earthquake started. The lights flickered and shook and the whole room shook, but thankfully no major injuries there. Meanwhile, a Metro Detroit family was in the middle of the earthquake there in Mexico and sent some of their videos to give us an idea of just what it was like to go through. The Vladimars live outside of Mexico City and it was built to withstand earthquakes, but the video shows that the home was still rattled. Andrea Vladimir says that she was picking up her daughter from school when the earthquake hit. In my car waiting for the um dismissal and uh, my car just started to shake and I see all the power lines shaking around me. The two people on the either side of me and their cars got out. And Vladimir says that the children had just done a drill that same day, hours earlier, on what to do in case of an earthquake. Luckily, none of the buildings in that area collapsed. For the very latest regarding the deadly hurricane near Mexico City throughout the day, you can always count on our website at clickondetroit.com for the very latest updates. It is 607 and we have new information this morning about two Ford plants located right here in Metro Detroit. The auto company saying both the Flat Rock Assembly and Michigan Assembly plants are going to be temporarily shut down near the end of this year. Ford says that the move will help reduce the inventories of slow selling vehicles. In total, five plants across North America are expected to be temporarily shut down. Well, today marks the start of Rosh Hashanah. That is the Jewish New Year. It's also the beginning of the Jewish High Holy Days. Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown and ends at nightfall on Friday. It is 6.08 now. And if you can't beat them, join them. At least that's what Kohl's is saying when it comes to Amazon. But the retailer is now offering. Plus, Jason is here in the carport. We're talking the Lions. Yeah, for those who love the Lions but still have little faith, even after a 2-0 start, we have just the thing for you coming up next.
Well, it's been more than 24 hours, but we're still talking about them. And Jason has something for those bandwagon Lions fans. Yeah, what's this all about? Uh, don't trust the Lions 2-0 start, but still want to support them by repping the Honolulu Blue. Well, try renting, renting a jersey. A company called Rep the Squad just launched a subscription service that allows fans to rent jerseys month by month. The cost is under $20 for adults. An authentic football jersey typically costs around $100 or more. So if you want to rock a different player's name on the back or get the most updated logo or just have a love hate relationship with the Lions and this is probably for you and if it is we put all the information on how to rent the jerseys on the consumer page of click on Detroit.com not, not, not terrible now since there's already a lot of talk about the Super Bowl we wanted to, to make, make sure hopes aren't getting too high too much Kool-Aid being consumed after the 2-0 start the Lions have only gone 2 and 0 three times in the last 20 years, 2011, 2019 and 99. They made the playoffs in 2011 and in 1999, but were bounced in the first round. Now another stat to know, not since 1980 have the Lions gone 2 and 0 with wins in double digits. They however missed the playoffs that year. The uh, Bubba Baker Lions, the Silver Rush and all that. Back to you guys. <laughs> all righty. I think the lines look very good. Yeah, so far. Yeah. <laughs> and that rent the jersey thing, is that a bit? Because then you can have all different players' jerseys, and you're not dropping all of that money on every single one. That's not that's true, idea. but there's something about ownership. You know I what know. I mean? Yeah, the whole giving it back thing yeah. doesn't seem right. I don't know. Maybe all right. you can rent to own. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad idea. <laughs> 613 is your time. What do you guys think? Would you rent a Lions jersey or any other team, per se? I was just thinking about this yeah. for everyone who has a Verlander jersey. I mean, it's not really good anymore. Well, that's true of any team. You, know, you have your favorite player, and if they get traded or if they retire or whatever, then. Mm -hmm. I don't have a Lions jersey. I do own a Pistons jersey. I went with Drummond. That's pretty safe. Oh, yeah. I'd that's say pretty, he's yeah, going to be here for good. a while. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to do is try and pick somebody who's going to have a long life. A long Detroit right. career. Absolutely. But I, I like the idea. Yeah, but that, although it's increasingly rare to see players stay with one team for their entire career. Exactly. So. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, it's a tough segue, but let's get right into what's going on with the hurricane. Yeah, lots going on. Yeah, the news just keeps getting worse and worse. Uh, as I mentioned uh, in, in the last uh, segment, the uh, last observation I had from San Juan was a 91 mile per hour wind gust. And then the next observation didn't have wind, and so uh, the anemometer may have failed. The wind sensor may have failed, and now I haven't received an observation in like 35, 45 minutes. So it's possible that they've either lost power communications or uh, just the weather station is gone. But in any event, uh, the radar also now is either down or they've lost power or they've lost communications. Here's the latest image that I have, the eye making it onto the island. This is the eye wall right here with the strongest wind, and that's just moving directly to the northwest. Uh, we'll bring you out and just give you a better perspective perspective. Uh, again, you just can't draw it up any better in a textbook than this. We had an eye wall, eye wall replacement cycle during the overnight hours. I'll let this run one more time. If you look, there's an inner eye wall right here, and then there's an outer eye wall. And as the inner one goes away, that weakened the storm from category five to uh, from basically 165 miles per hour down to 155. Okay, big deal, but just a changing category. Still a catastrophic storm, direct hit on the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. The storm is going to continue moving to the northwest and then take a sharp sharp turn up to the north and beyond that uh, we're gonna have to wait and see but tropical storm Jose up there may have some impact and we'll probably talk about that more in our next half hour but in any event the computer models are all pretty much in agreement on the path up through five days Again, it's beyond that that we have to kind of keep an eye on things. Mid 60s right now, muggy, steamy, pockets of dense fog in the area. Very, very light wind out there. You're going to feel that humidity when you walk out the door. So there you see all the clouds, but there is some breakup of the clouds to the west. It's going to be a gradual process today, but we should start to see some breaks developing by midday and then hopefully partly cloudy by the end of the afternoon. And there you see it on the model, just uh, uh, basically a, a gradual process with the clouds. The model's trying to spit out a, a shower there in the afternoon up in the thumb but I think that's not going to happen or it would be so isolated that we don't need to plan on rain. 81 the high for today. Eventually, once that sun comes out and then it's going to be mid 80s right through the weekend. We're going to have sunshine tomorrow all the way through Tuesday with again mid 80s. Just it's going to feel like summer, Kim. Oh, I almost forgot about the weather window. Sorry about that. Hey, here's a nice shot from our Penobscot sky cam looking down at the river there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful shot. Uh, the Hanson's weather window not showing too much fog downtown, but there are again pockets of dense fog in other parts of the area, Kim. 
That is right. What a pretty shot that was. Well, yes, as Paula is saying, we are dealing with some patchy fog, so just be careful. It's not everywhere, but you may run into it, so just give yourself a little bit of extra time this morning. Now, we've got a few problems to let you know about. We'll start with this problem over in Holly. The southbound lanes of I-75 right at Grange Hall Road here, an accident blocking the left shoulder. And we've got another accident for those of you traveling over on the eastbound side of M14. That ramp to southbound I-275, there is an accident blocking the shoulder there. Use caution while approaching that area. Other than that, we are looking good. No more accidents to talk about, but we've got construction on the southbound side of US 23 from six mile to M 14. Expect one lane blocked there for a nightly project starting at 7 p.m. wrapping up at 7 a.m. This is going to continue nightly until the 28th of September. Also on northbound US 23 between North Territorial Territorial Road to six mile one lane block there 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. And this will continue nightly as well all the way until Saturday and stick around because we also want to let you know about all those accidents. We'll give you an update on that coming up in my next report at 624. Everett. Alrighty, Kim, we'll see you in just a little bit. It is 617. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. We're talking about IHOP and Applebee's both coming to downtown Detroit, plus Kohl's offering a new service for Amazon customers. But first, Democrats are hoping to crack down on political ads on social media. Maribel Aper joining us live now from NASDAQ. Let's start there. Good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Democrats on Capitol Hill want new rules on social media to prevent meddling in U.S. elections. So that's what's happening. The politicians are hoping to prevent foreigners from using advertising platforms such as Facebook and Twitter to influence voters. The group plans to send a letter to the Federal Election Commission seeking the change. The effort comes after Facebook said it had sold more than 3,000 ads to accounts linked to Russia going back to 2015. Kohl's will accept some Amazon returns starting next month. The service will be available at 82 coal stores in Los Angeles and Chicago. Kohl's will pay pack and ship eligible items back to Amazon for free. As an added bonus, customers visiting for Amazon returns can use designated parking spots near store entrances. And it's the first of its kind in the world, and it's coming to downtown Detroit. It's the first ever Applebee's IHOP combination restaurant. It's going to open at the Millender Center in the spring. The IHOP will have a quick serve concept with a pared down menu. The same thing goes for Applebee's. Evrod, great combo. I dig Applebee's fried chicken salad because I feel like I'm being somewhat healthy. <laughs> that is good. We're very excited. A lot of new restaurants coming to downtown Detroit. So we've got that and Giordano's just open last week, in fact. So if you love Chicago deep dish pizza, that's a place to check out. Thank you, Maribel. Well, let's turn things over to Kim DiGiulio. Go. She's got uh, a very cool, very cool puppy this morning and a very cool name at that. Who do we have here? <laughs> I was going to say, Everett, you're going to like this name. All right. I'll give you a hint. R-E-S-P-C-T. <laughs> Right. That is Aretha Franklin exactly. right here. Exactly. Oh she my gosh. Some, she wants uh, some respect. Don't you? She is oh. the cutest dog ever. Isn't what kind of cute? dog is she? They're saying she's a collie shepherd mix. She was a miracle puppy. Uh, mother was found stray, skinny, debilitated, and all of a sudden the puppy just popped out. So oh, oh my wasn't goodness. an expected. So she was did born not at the shelter. She was born at the shelter. Wow, well, she is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and she's young. She's very young. She's only six and a half weeks old, so she's so going to be a big dog. She, we just said about 45, 45 pounds? 45 to 55, maybe more. All right. Well, keep in mind that she is not potty trained yet because she's so young, mm -hmm. but that's okay because a lot of people like puppies and like to train them themselves. Right, they do. So you definitely want to call as soon as possible to adopt Aretha Franklin. Call Detroit Dog Rescue at 313-458-8014. And she's just as soft as can be, as sweet as can be, yep. little kisser. Right. Oh, uh, she loves feet. She's got a foot fetish already, guys. She goes right <laughs> through your toes. <laughs> that is yeah. awesome. All right, well, thank you, Patrice, for joining us this morning and call to get Aretha Franklin today. Aretha Franklin. Back to you. Uh, only one dog in the litter, Patrice? One wow, dog. that's bizarre. I know. Very cool. It was a nine-year-old mom, so yes. she's like, one and done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Patrice. <laughs> When you're a little older, you don't want multiples. That's a lot. 621 is your time, everybody. And coming up, impact at a young age. Why youth football may be just as dangerous as college or professional football for your kids. And you're going to want to come close to your TV screen this morning. It might be you or somebody that you know who is our Facebook friend for today. Do you know this person or is this you? This is Chris Meller. 
He is from Frazier. He's a husband and father of two, and he works with high schoolers to help make them to help them make good choices in life. Well, that is wonderful. We have something fun for you to do with your family. Tickets to the Michigan Renaissance Festival just for being our friend of the day, Chris. So congratulations to you and to everybody else. If you want to be our next friend of the day, you have to like the local four Facebook page and click on the friend of the day tab. We'll be right back. All right, let's get you out the door here on our Wednesday morning. Happy hump day. We're starting off with some dense fog in spots that will gradually thin. We'll gradually see some breaks in the overcast and then hopefully partly cloudy by the end of the day. A warm, steamy one with a high in the low 80s. Kim? All right, well, we want to let you know about this accident over on the eastbound lanes of M14, the ramp to southbound I-275 that is blocking your shoulder. Use caution while traveling this way. All right, Kim, thank you. Turning our attention to good health at 625 on your Wednesday morning. Are we facing an antibiotic shortage? The World Health Organization says yes, the world is running out of antibiotics and antimicrobial resistance has become a global health emergency. A new report by the organization says that a growing resistance to drugs that fight infections could seriously jeopardize progress in modern medicine. The study identifies 13 families of drug resistant diseases that pose a serious threat like tuberculosis. The World Health Organization says that there are 51 new antibiotics in the works to tackle resistant strains. And youth football. A new study from Boston University took a closer look at the effects of youth football on over 200 middle aged men. And the findings are seriously shocking. Those who started playing before the age of 12 were much more likely to have mood swings, emotional problems and depression later in life. These risks were consistent regardless of how many years the men played or the number of concussions that they may have reported. Time now is 627 and coming up next at 630. Local stories for you from Livonia, Redford and Detroit. Plus, we are continuing to follow breaking news from the city's west side where a building exploded. Local force Nick Monticelli is there live at the scene. We'll be checking in with him for live report coming up. But first, dangerous ground. We'll show you the moment a sinkhole opens up under a home in Florida. It's today's top video and it's coming up next. Wow. Navigate your morning. Well, that's one way to make a basement. Today's top video takes us down to Florida, where some scary moments for this family actually after a huge sinkhole opened up Tuesday morning, swallowing up part of the home. This is in central Florida. Yeah, fortunately, the family was able to get out of that home in time, so there were no serious injuries. Wow. We're back in a moment. I Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Blown to bits. This is all that's left of a popular local motorcycle club after an early morning explosion. And Hurricane Maria is a monster storm. You are looking at live pictures right now from one of the meteorologists reporting from Puerto Rico. Of course, Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory and it faces what could be the strongest hurricane to ever hit that island. Oh. It's very scary, and Paul Gross has been tracking this monster storm all morning long. Yeah, let's turn things over to him, Paul. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, it is the th it's first of all, it is the strongest ever to hit Puerto Rico, and it is the it this morning. It set the tenth all-time lowest pressure for a storm in the Atlantic Basin ever. Let's go right now to an NBC News special report from Puerto Rico. We're going to have that report in just a moment, but we had if you've been watching, we. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Matt Lauer and Savannah Guthrie. And good morning, everyone. 631 on the East Coast. We're coming on the air right now because Hurricane Maria has made landfall on Puerto Rico. And this is the scene in Puerto Rico right now. A powerful Category 4 storm. Maria is hitting with 155 mile an hour winds, torrential rain, the strongest storm this island has faced in nearly a century. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is live for us in San Juan right now. Gabe, good morning. 
Savannah, good morning. The situation here is dire. We've been pounded by ferocious winds for the last several hours, and it is only getting worse. Hurricane force winds now are slamming into San Juan. Authorities say this could be a potentially catastrophic situation. We have sought shelter inside a concrete structure, but others on this island will not be so fortunate. Authorities for days have been practically begging people in wooden structures and flood prone areas to evacuate. They've opened 500 shelters and more than 10,000 people uh, this morning are in shelters. As you can see behind me, it is blinding conditions here. We've seen debris peeled off buildings already. The, it is, most roads are impassable. It is simply, it, it is difficult uh, to be outside and we are taking very, being very careful uh, as to how we're bringing you these live images. But Savannah and Matt, Authorities here fear this could be potentially devastating for this region. The strongest storm to hit Puerto Rico in nearly a century. Irma just grazed this island, but there. Irma just grazed this island, but more than 60,000 people were left without power, and now with a weak power grid, there's no telling what type of devastation Maria could bring. Back to you. All right, Gabe, thank you very much. Uh, we should mention, he said all those shelters have been open. Now there are questions, can those shelters withstand winds of 150, 160 miles an hour? NBC's Tammy Leitner also in San Juan this morning. Tammy, what's the scene where you are? Hey, Matt and Savannah, I can tell you that where we are on the island, the conditions have deteriorated very quickly. We've actually had to move several times because of debris that's falling down. There are several huge trees that have gone down just about 20 yards behind me. There are about 10,000 people that have taken refuge in shelters. But I can tell you we've spoken with a lot of people on this island in the last few days that have said they are going to hunker down and wait this storm out in their homes. We've also spoken with tourists who are trapped here on the island. I can tell you where we are. FEMA has set up their headquarters and they have about 300 first responders that are ready to head out as soon as the storm passes by and make rescues. Back to you guys. All right, Tammy, thank you so much. And let's turn to Al. I mean, this is a very dire situation. This is what we feared the most, and it is coming to fruition, unfortunately. Right now, as you heard, 155 mile per hour winds, but we've had gusts of up to 190 miles per hour, and it is moving northwest at 10 miles per hour. So here's what we look for as far as the impacts. The winds are going to be devastating. We're talking about gusts up to 150 or more hurricane force winds throughout the afternoon. The storm surge where we get most of the deaths and damage six to nine feet from San Juan all the way through the southern uh, tip of the island and the flooding. We're talking about river and highway flooding, mudslides, uh, totals of 20 to 25 inches before this is all over. And it continues after devastates Puerto Rico. It's at the Dominican Republic tomorrow with 75 mile per hour winds, a four to six foot storm surge, four to eight inches or or more of rain and then on into the Turks and Caicos on Friday. Winds 100 to 125 miles per hour. A storm surge of up to 15 feet. That could be ultimately devastating for these islands. Four to eight inches of rain and then continues out into the Atlantic. Guys, we'll take a look at this a little bit later uh, because now we're, we still have to watch this track as far as the southeastern United States is concerned. Mm -hmm. All right, Al. Thank you very much. By the way, there's another natural disaster unfolding right now. It's happening in Mexico. The death toll from the powerful earthquake there soaring to more than 200 people overnight countless others said to be trapped in the rubble frantic efforts underway to free them nbc's miguel almaguer is in mexico city miguel good morning to you Matt, good morning. A scene of devastation all across this country. I want to show you what's unfolding over my shoulder here. This is actually the scene playing out in city after city across this region. Search and rescue teams have arrived at an employment center where dozens of people have been pulled out of the rubble alive and where search and rescue teams at this hour are looking for approximately 30 to 40 more people that are still buried underneath all of this rubble. It's an active scene here. Over my other shoulder, there is family members here waiting for any news of anyone that may still be inside and trapped inside. The death toll here rising to about 200. And they were told that the situation here is still very fluid, not just on this one city block, but all across Mexico City. 
Matt. All right, Miguel, thanks. A lot of news this morning, unfortunately, not a lot of it good. No, so we'll be following what's happening in Mexico City in terms of the recovery efforts and also what's happening as we speak with Hurricane Maria hitting Puerto Rico. We'll see you in just a few moments on today. I'm Savannah Guthrie alongside Matt Lauer and Al Roker and our correspondents in the field. This has been an NBC News special report. Well, thanks very much. You'll have more on the Today Show. Uh, we've not received radar imagery from San Juan uh, in the past hour or so, neither a weather observation from the airport. So we'll have more on that coming up in the next uh, 10 minutes. Right now, starting our day with temperatures in the mid 60s, a warm, muggy morning. Visibilities are down to zero in some spots with patchy, dense fog. I say patchy because some spots are a half a mile to a mile. Some spots are near zero. Through the day, the fog thins. We gradually start to see some breaks in the overcast. So for the kids heading out to school, we're going to see the fog, but this afternoon, partly cloudy skies and low 80s. Kim? All right, thank you, Paul. Well, good news. We have cleared one accident, the one over on the ramp from M14 to southbound I-275. So we're just dealing with one right now over in Holly, southbound I-75, right at Grange Hall Road. There is an accident there blocking your left shoulder. Use caution while approaching that area. Back to you. Thank you, Kim. At 638, we want to get to breaking news that we're following here at home, a popular club destroyed during an early morning explosion. Yes, Nick Monticelli joins us now live from outside of what used to be that building on Detroit's west side with the very latest on what could have sparked this explosion in the first place. Are investigators giving any clues as to what they think caused it? Rhonda, they believe this was a natural gas explosion. And in fact, the fire reignited the Detroit Fire Department is back out here live right now, putting more hot spots and more fires out in the rubble. We also have some video we can show you. This explosion happened at about midnight, and they believe again it was a natural gas explosion. There was uh, some kind of gas, it was natural gas leaking inside of this building. They don't know what sparked it just yet. They also don't know why it was leaking. Those are things that investigators will have to determine. The most important thing, though, is that nobody was, is in, was inside when this happened, so there was nobody hurt, no injuries and all. Now, we just talked to a neighbor across the street who said the motorcycle club, most of them have bad reps. They think it's a lot of trouble, some, uh, some bad dudes causing bad problems. She says this was the exact opposite. Surprising, you know, most people be like, oh, no, motorcycle club. Um, they were really nice. I always had bounce houses outside. They were really private. They, even when they be out late at night, barbecuing and partying or whatever, but you never heard them. All right, back out here live, we just saw this pickup truck with the DTE person coming here on scene again because, again, they do believe this was some kind of natural gas leak. And if you look over here, you can see those firefighters had to climb on top of this rubble, on top of what's left of this motorcycle club here at Dexter and Webb to try to get to those hot spots. They are still working on them, and they will be out here for at least another 20 minutes or so. We are live here at Detroit's west side. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All right, Nick, thank you. We are also following other stories from across the metro area for you this morning. And those include stories from Royal Oak, Springfield Township, and Redford Township. But first, let's start in Livonia. That's where a very bizarre story. A man who owns a, and operates a modeling agency there accused of luring young girls for child pornography. After uncovering a sex trafficking operation in Flint, federal agents raided the home of that man, 28-year-old Ryan Ullman, and they found child porn images there. Authorities say that he was using the agency to entice young girls to send him photos of themselves. Kept persisting that that is the way his agency worked that his agency was a lot different from any other agency. Now, Ullman appeared before a federal judge on Tuesday. He's being detained until his detention hearing this Friday. A stranger danger alert in Redford Township this morning. Police say that an eight year old student at Beach Elementary School was approached by a stranger in the south parking lot of that school. The man in question was driving a light blue car when the student refused to get in that vehicle. He drove away. But if you have any information that could help police track him down, give them a call. And in Springfield Township, the man accused of shooting his gun on a golf course has been charged. This is 45 year old Robert Fleece. He's charged with felonious assault and reckless discharge of a firearm. Police saying that he confronted golfers Saturday at Heather Highlands over empty beer cans. 
And police in Royal Oak have identified the person responsible for the racist graffiti in several homes, but there will not be any charges filed against him. Investigators say that the person in question seems to suffer from serious mental health issues, and police say the person will be evaluated by a psychologist. Still ahead, the burdens of breast cancer, from money problems to job loss, the issues that go far beyond the diagnosis and treatment for many patients. Plus, there's this hospital controversy after video of a nurse mishandling a newborn spreads on social media. It is very disturbing and we'll have the charges that might be on the way when we come back. And let's take a look at this week's four frenzy game of the week across town rivalry gross point north versus gross point south the norsemen will look to upset the blue devils to snap a two game losing streak that game is set for friday should be a beautiful warm night at gross point south good luck to both teams four friends Welcome back everyone. It is 645 and a group of employees at a Florida hospital could possibly face criminal charges after posting videos of newborn babies online. Take a look. Well, this would be pretty disturbing for any parent not knowing what's going on with their newborn. Staff members had rap music blaring in the background while another employee from Naval Hospital in Jacksonville made a newborn baby dance all for Snapchat. A photo was also posted on social media showing that same person making an obscene gesture towards that newborn, saying that that's how she felt about the infant. The hospital said in a statement that the staff members involved have been identified and removed from patient care. We're also told that they were not nurses. The eye of the storm is now over Puerto Rico, and let's send things over to Paul Gross, who is tracking Hurricane Maria. And what is the category now, Paul? It's category four, and the radar is down in San Juan. I've been showing you radar all morning. Well, I can't now, but we can show you the satellite because that's up in space, not affected by the storm. Here's the eye, and you can see the eye has now made it over the island. So this is a direct hit from a 155 mile per hour category four hurricane. A little broader perspective here just to show you. There again, went right over just to the south of St. Croix, and then you can see the eye is right there over the island of Puerto Rico. And so this is a catastrophe and it's going to be a humanitarian crisis and there are all sorts of records are being set. Strongest hurricane ever to hit Puerto Rico. And by the way, the, it's the third category four storm this season, which is unprecedented here in the modern era of record keeping. So we're in the mid 60s to start the day here. Much quieter start, of course. Uh, the air is calm and we have pockets of dense fog across the area. So watch out for that when you head out. You're going to run into some thick fog in some spots. Now we do have uh, the cavalry coming here in terms of some breaking up with the cloud cover to the west. It's a process. It's going to take its time coming across the area, but we are going to see as we move through the day a gradual lifting of the fog, and then we're going to see some breaks develop in the overcast. And by the end of the day, hopefully we're actually partly cloudy. And uh, with any sunshine that we get, we should get boosted up into the low 80s for a high. It's going to be a warm, steamy day. And then if you like warm and steamy and you like summer, well, you're going to love the next week from today all the way through next Tuesday. So that's a full week. We're going to see mid 80s with plenty of sunshine and no rain. And so we are going to have a week of summer as we now start fall. Kim? <laughs> oh, we are happy about that. Very happy. I about mean, that. technically, it is still summer until the end of the week. Exactly. So. It's appropriate. 21st, I think they change over. Absolutely. Oh, so. please. So you know you've had a It'll still be spice summer latte. and fall, though. I too. actually have not had a pumpkin you have. spice. I'm not embracing fall just yet. So basic. It's still summer for me, Honda. <laughs> <laughs> Although we are starting to see some colors changing on the trees. Yeah, kind of early, I think. Paul was talking about that the other day. He says that the trees are stressed out, and that's why that's happening. Am I right, Paul? Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning. All right, well, we're taking a look at the roads here, and we are looking good this morning. We just have one problem we want to let you know about. Over in Holly, an accident on the southbound side of I-75 right at Grange Hall Road here. This is blocking the left shoulder, so just watch out there. Also, we've got some construction over on eastbound I-696 between Van Dyke and Gratiot. Two lanes blocked there between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Also on eastbound I-696, we'll see the orange barrels between Evergreen and Coolidge. That We'll have one lane blocked tonight starting at 9 o'clock, wrapping up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Over to you. Today for Wellness Wednesday, the hidden cost, the true cost of breast cancer. Of course, 
uh, the cost personally is great from the pain and the treatments, preventative measures, surgeries. But this morning, we're actually looking at the financial burdens the deadly disease can have on one's life. A new study from the Pink Fund says about one third of patients were actually more scared about how the treatments would affect their finances than the cancer itself. And that comes with good reason. 36% reported losing their job after being diagnosed with breast cancer, and 23% said they nearly went bankrupt. Joining me this morning, Molly McDonald, who knows the story all too well. You basically were going through a difficult job transition, a divorce, breast cancer diagnosis, and financial toxicity. We were talking a few minutes ago about what that is. Can you explain for the folks at home? Yes, financial toxicity is an actual side effect designated by the American Society of Clinical Oncology a few years ago. And it talks, it's the emotional, physical, and mental financial side of treatment. So we all know that cancer treatment is expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our deductibles, our co-pays, prescriptions, hospital admissions. But when it's combined with loss of income, that's when you really start to spiral downward financially. And you're at risk for catastrophic financial losses, like the loss of your home, the repossession of a vehicle, the shutoff of utilities, sometimes the loss of your health insurance. And when that happens, you're pretty hopeless. You were in a difficult state, and yet somehow you found the resolve, the strength to fund, to find the fund, and, and that was in 2006. It took you a decade to get out of the hole that you were in. How in the world did you create something to help breast cancer uh, battlers during their most difficult financial times? Well, when I couldn't get any help for myself, and I asked the hospital social workers, everyone at the hospital, could somebody pay a bill for me? Um, and I met other working women like myself who were struggling financially while in treatment. I just, it came to me, I should give help. If I can't get help, maybe I could give help. And if I could help one family, then that would make sense of what happened to us. So I bought a book called How to Form a Nonprofit Corporation. It started with a book. A book, a $50 book, which I recommend anybody to buy before they start one. And it's very thick and way too much to read. But, um, I had a vision for this organization, and the minute I had that shift in thinking, even despite the fact I was still in line at the food bank and bargaining with creditors, I became so energized and empowered thinking I could make a difference that I was like a rabbit. It was just going forward. And I tell people, if I could take that shift in thinking, put it in a gel cap, and give it to everybody, the world would be a nicer place. How much money have you raised to help breast cancer? Balance. Well, I can't tell you how much we've raised total over the last 12 years, but we have paid out over 2.3 million. It's about 2.3 million 70 cents. <laughs> tell everybody about the event on October 5th. So we have an event in Michigan that benefits Michigan patients only, and it is called Dancing with the Survivors. Breast cancer survivors are paired with Fred Astaire pros from Bloomfield Hills, and they perform in a showcase. It's not a competition because these women have already been through quite a bit but they perform in order to raise money for us. Each dancer is raising $3,000 to support one woman in treatment. You know, I, I witnessed you interact with somebody who uh, said it was literally a game changer, a lifesaver, so mm -hmm. you're definitely doing the good work, and mm -hmm. we, we really appreciate it, Molly. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. How can somebody find out more information? Just go to the website, thepinkfund.org. You can purchase tickets there under events, and you can look to the full survey. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Back to you guys. A uh, great organization to support. Molly is an incredible leader. And a moving event as well. Absolutely. All Congratulations. Right. The 652, everybody. We've got your stories to watch for next. Keep it here. Sky Forge. Well, welcome back, everybody. Breaking news this morning from Detroit's west side where a motorcycle club is gone. Uh, it's a big hangout. It used to be, but it has been completely leveled by an explosion likely caused by a natural gas leak. Thankfully, no one was inside at the time of the explosion, so no injuries, but it does remain unclear whether it was a gas leak that caused it. Hurricane Maria has made landfall in Puerto Rico this morning. The Category 4 storm should weaken as it makes its way across the island. But unfortunately, the damage from this storm still expected to be catastrophic. And speaking of catastrophes in Mexico, 217 people have lost their lives after this massive earthquake hit south of Mexico City. Volunteers and first responders are still digging through the destruction of downed buildings and homes in hopes of rescuing people. Mexico declared a state of disaster on Tuesday after that 7.1 magnitude quake. Paul? 
Well, we're starting the day with dense fog in some spots. In fact, many parts of the immediate metropolitan area are right now at a quarter mile or less. And as we move through the day, well, starting off in the mid 60s, hopefully some breaks of sunshine by this afternoon with a high in the low 80s. Kim. All right, well, we'd have one accident over in Holly on the southbound lanes of 75 right at Grange Hall Road. The left lane is blocked there. Alrighty. Well, we are done. That's our show for today. It That's is right. much more on the Today Show uh, in terms of Hurricane Maria and also what's left there in Mexico City after that earthquake. We'll see you tomorrow.